Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. My name is Patrick Nelson, the Managing Director of Reach Markets, and we're here tonight to talk about uh, a bit about what's going on in the market at the moment, where we think things are going to head, and also about an investment we think is suitable for what's going on at the moment. Um, before I get into that, uh, some just general housekeeping. If you have any questions as we go through this presentation, just type them into the chat box, and uh, I will. I'll answer them either in the moment that we're talking or at the very end of the main body of my presentation, which will not take that long. It's probably uh, around 20 minutes to explain the investment, uh, why we are interested in this, and a bit around our view on a number of factors, uh, and then into Q&A from that point on. Now, any advice contained in tonight's presentation is general only. It doesn't take into consideration your personal circumstances, and you need to decide for yourself whether it's appropriate for you past returns are not an accurate indicator of future returns. Right? So we're going to talk about what's happening to our market, how to optimise an entry into a fear-driven market, how to cap your downside, uh, and why technology, we believe US technology is well positioned for a rebound. Right? Now, you know, broadly, what happened to our market recently, uh, well, we've seen it consolidate. Um, and I didn't watch the market close. I did notice it weakened towards the end of the day, um, and I've been on a call for the last couple of hours. But um, we saw our market do an unprecedented pullback. So during the GFC, it took 47 weeks to drop around 34 to 38% in this final day here. And then after that, it sort of capitulated over the next 20 weeks. It gave up uh, about uh, uh, another 20%, right? This year, from the end of uh, from the so end of Feb, start of March, um, which is you know this this green this green week up here, this is a weekly chart. Uh, it gave up 38% in four weeks. I mean, it 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 is not something we've seen before. We haven't seen that kind of fear selling. Also, from a volatility perspective, I don't think we've got the historical implied volatility um, to look at, but you know, it, it's the, the volatility and the movement of volatility was it was was extreme, and um, you know we gave up a lot of territory in, in a very very short period of time uh, in unprecedented water. Now, you know, where does it go to from here? Well, coronavirus we refer to it as a black swan event in that we didn't foresee it happening, and the implications uh, were not understood when it when it began, and there still it's to be seen where this heads, right? We still don't know if we open up our, um, if we open up business and commerce and normal human to human transactions or interactions, or even if it's restricted to open up our economy again, um, uh, open up our borders, resume traveling, resume doing things that we do, uh, will it kick back off again? Will it come back? What will that do to the market? What will that type of fear in, in, in occur and over the next um, we're really going to find out about that over the next six months right because we're going to go back to all right kids go back to school hopefully next term businesses open up uh, we'll loosen up the social interactions but what happens if okay now we have to go back to level four now we have to go to five I don't know where does where, you know um, where where does it end and so there's there is a it's a, there's a real unknown factor about where we are We've seen this happen. We've seen the sell-off in the market. We've seen uh, significant opportunities now uh, for buyers to buy things at a discount. But the timing of it is the challenging point. It's not our only problem. Um, you know, uh, Trump, uh, although he jewel bones things a lot, um, uh, the, the Chinese, the Americans, the trade wars, there are, there are other factors that were existing back uh, in February. Uh, when the market broke through the new highs, when volatility was down at 12%, you know, and, uh, you know, but regardless of all of these different factors, one day this guy will come back. It's just a question of when will they come back, right? So global financial crisis, we could see what the markets did, uh, tech companies, the market itself, very, very similar sort of performance coming out, 71% um, after the, the low year one, 15% year two, 35, 7, 27, 21, you know, significant growth from where the market hits lows, right? Will that be now? 
Will it be in six months' time or four months' time? We're not sure, right? There are companies, though, that have got tailwinds coming out of what's going on at the moment, right? And technology is one of those. So if, do I want to invest in bricks and mortar um, retail? Uh, do I want to invest in tourism, uh, in, you know, in a whole range of areas where those, where those businesses have been disrupted from what's gone on and they're now either changing their model, adopting new technologies, uh, or they're in shutdown mode and the implications for those uh, sectors are going to be far reaching and for a long period of time. We believe coming out of this what represents a, a good opportunity at technology companies. One, they went into this crisis, a lot of the biggest ones over in the States um, were really well capitalised going into it. But now you've got people using consuming online. So we're buying our consumables online. Um, we're doing our business online. We're looking at Zoom meetings and thinking, well, uh, you know, one division of our, our business is roadshows in Asia. Why would we get on a plane and or granted we can't, uh, why would we get on a plane and fly to Asia to hold a meeting with someone where we can basically do the same thing uh, over uh, a Zoom chat, go to meeting chat, uh, or big market chat, or whereby chat, and so forth, and these technologies now are improving, um, and the inter you know, I can share the information I want to share, like we're on the session tonight, you know. Uh, Ten years ago, if I was doing a session like this, we would have booked a hotel and we would have flown to Sydney and Brisbane and over to Perth and maybe gone to New Zealand and so forth to talk about what we did and how we went about it, right? Things have changed, um, but there, we're, the technology and the speed companies and people are adopting their technology for the business they do has changed as well and isn't going back. When we came out of the GFC, 60% uh, of subscription of revenue coming out of software companies uh, it was 60% of the revenue was subscription based. It's now 80%, right? These businesses have done everything to, to put themselves on subscription revenue and also protect themselves. So, you know, when the market slows down, uh, you don't stop using the technology, but years ago, you just wouldn't upgrade your technology for a couple of years if your cash flow wasn't great. Now you're in a subscription model, you roll over. So there are significant tailwinds for the big tech companies. Um, some of these businesses are increasing, uh, their bottom lines are improving, and we think coming out of this will be very well positioned um, moving forward. So the product we've got is an, is an optimizer. Optimizer refers to how we enter into the position. Uh, it allows us to enter into the position where, you know what, we're worried about what's going on. We're worried about corona, about opening up the economy and it's shrinking, you know, going back to lockdown. So we want to be able to optimise our entry point and choose the best entry point possible over the next six months. We're getting exposure to the US tech stocks. Uh, we believe they've got significant tailwinds and a position better for a rebound. Um, it's an investment with capped downside. You can use a smaller amount of money to get your exposure. You're capped on the downside and you're in a position where you can optimise the entry point. Why do we look at US tech stocks um, and the US? Well, you know, the, the companies, the US market, and I'll, and I'll flick back down here, uh, the information technology sector makes up 24% uh, of the market. In Australia, it's 2.48%, right? Uh, the US tech stocks, the Googles, the Facebooks, um, you know, the big companies that come in that disrupt, they're not providing a solution, you know, as business business, you'd have a very successful business that just serviced Melbourne and Sydney, right, and provide its products. Now we're looking at businesses that disrupt whole sectors and industries uh, and use technology to replace the way people used to do business in the past. And it's a global play and the biggest global providers that access to technology, resources, technology and so forth is over in the States. And we've seen this play out, the performance that's done in the S&P 500 versus Australia 200, right? How, you know, if we go and have a look at the Australian market, uh, financials, Australia 33%, uh, materials 17%. Now, this is a little bit out of date. This, this is probably a year or two old, but still, right? It's not too far off there. Um, it makes up a massive percentage of our economy and our market. 
Do you think the growth is going to come out of this? Do you think these companies can double, triple? Um, uh, you know, and and so the I guess the, the, the our focus on the US is for that reason, right? In the year after the trough, and sort of timing-wise, going out of bear markets. Um, you know, is an interesting time to be looking at a potential investment. So if you want an investment with cap downside, this gives you that. Um, the way the investment is structured, uh, if for a 14,900 uh, 14, net outlay, that will give you $100,000 worth of exposure to the US tech optimizer. So the, 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 the tech sector in the States, it's a two year investment term. The maximum risk is 14,900 and your maximum exposure is $100,000. So you've got uncut cap upside on $100,000, but it's a two-year investment return. The way the numbers work is it's a, for that $100,000 exposure, you're paying $11,900 in prepaid interest, and there's advisor fees depending on the amount that you put in. That gets you to $14,900. Now, in terms of how the entry on the investment works and how the strategy value is determined, um, it takes the lowest month end over the next six months, all right? So if the market rallies from where we are today, you get in at these current levels, right? So you don't miss out, you're in, your, your investment is set up, all right? Um, however, if the market falls, right, what happens, right? Well. There is a look back option that is structured. So it looks back and it will take, after six months, the lowest end of month uh, price. And that will be the strategy value. That is how the strategy value is determined, right? So it allows you to, put, to go in and if the market comes off, choose the, the, the strategy will be determined on that lowest level over that next six months. So if it falls, our strategy value is cheaper. If it rises, great, we're already in. So it addresses the challenge that we've got at the moment is that there is so many unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen. Will coronavirus uh, slow down our economy again? Will it bring the fear back, the volatility back? Will it bring back the big falls? Um, how will we go through reporting seasons? Uh, what will be the contagion and what will that do uh, to the market? If it escalates, we can go in at lower prices. If, it, if the market recovers, the stimulus kicks in um, and uh, the economy is opened back up and growth comes back in uh, and the market uh, rallies up and the tech st stocks um, go with it and go beyond that, rate, we we're able to take a position, right? Um, and I know there's the, you know, there's the, all the, the old sayings, which is buy when there's blood on the streets, um, you know, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. But timing is really important, isn't it? Right. So it's one thing to say, um, you know, the market sold off, it's cheaper. Uh, but, you know, if you get that wrong and the market significantly falls further, um, that is an issue for you as well. So the structure of this investment is to set you up so you can get in now. If the market moves, you believe that's going to be the case, you're in, you're focusing on a, on a sector where you may have a belief, if it's the same as us, that the companies in that sector actually get a tailwind out of what's happening recently. Um, they're not immune. No, no sector is immune. There will be companies in there that, that will have issues because of corona. Nothing's immune. However, uh, some of the businesses are great beneficiaries from what's going on. All right? In terms of how the financials work, the numbers work behind this, uh, if you say the total, if, if you wanted $100,000 worth of exposure and you don't have to take $100,000 worth of exposure, you can take less, you can take more. That's absolutely up to you just for the purposes of rounding the numbers. $14,900. Um, if the market does nothing, then your money and capital at risk and your interest to what goes into the investment, um, you're not going to make money. You'll lose money. If the market was to be up 25% at the end of the period, then uh, final coupon on maturity would be $25,000. So you've made $10,000 from that, which is a 67% re return on your initial net outlay. If the market goes up by 50% um, from these current levels, uh, then 236, 75%, uh, 400%, 100%, 500% return. Okay. 
Uh, so if you think the tech sector could perform very, very strongly or uh, could recover and go back up to previous highs or beyond there, this is a way of being able to uh, trade, trade that in, take, take a position. But your risk at risk to get in is 14,900. 14,900. Now, if I wanted to put $100,000 into the market at the moment, uh, what's my risk? $100,000. If coronavirus escalates, if things really get worse, um, then my at-risk amount is $100,000, right? And uh, in this case, we're able to use a significantly smaller amount of money, get our, get our exposure, enter into the market now. If the market falls over the next six months, we get to choose a lower strategy value based on where the lowest point is at the end of month. Uh, over that six month period and set ourselves into the trade, all right? Uh, so it, it ticks a lot of boxes in terms of getting up and getting running. In terms of your exposure amount, that is up to you. 17,950 will get you uh, 50,000, uh, 14,900 will get you 100,000. So people will take uh, larger amounts, people will take smaller amounts. It's absolutely up to you. If you would like to get the prospectus, and when we send the prospectus, you can tell us what exposure amount you want. Uh, so if you type that into the chat box now, we'll send the prospectus out to you and, and get that through to you um, with the pre-populated or exposure amount. Uh, all you need to do is type that into the chat box. All right. um, we like this because it allows us to confidently take a position in a high fear market, limited downside risk with uncapped upside, and it's positioned for a bear um, uh, bear market. Um, going back to the old Warren Buffettism, I like to buy stocks. I don't wish will on anyone, but if they want to sell them to me cheaper, I prefer it. You know, the market has come off. It might come off further. Um, this gives us an opportunity to get set and you get set in companies. This guy, Warren Buffett, by the way, has had a tremendous amount of criticism over the last 12 months and has an extraordinary amount of money sitting in cash. We know what he's done in the past. I think he's going to be an interesting guy to, to look at and see what he does over the next six to 12 months. Um, but it's been these types of markets of which he's been able to get his position set and go in there and buy some companies. But that'll be another interesting one to have a look at. Um, technology stocks um, have had significant growth coming out of, out of the markets. Um, and you know we think that, that that may occur going forward. Um, Morgan Stanley's comment here, they see you know, some companies coming out stronger. Um, these are listed here. These are companies that are, uh, are in, in the majority of them are in the tech sector in the US. Uh, and so we've got that opportunity to get into these businesses. They've sold off. They're going to come back, uh, a lot of people believe, a lot stronger post downturn. They've, everything went down, right? Um, Google, Facebook were off 40%, right? Um, but, you know, uh, and, and, and a lot of other businesses as well that are actually, you know, I mean, things like Zoom, obviously everyone's going, wow, this thing's going to be a mate, this is going to be huge, and that went up. But a lot of companies that people don't really understand how this is going to play out, well, them got caught up in the selling as well, still have, but it kind of come out stronger. Additional features around this investment is a limit recourse line, the maximum at-risk amount is the... Um, is the is, is the amount that you set in initially. So if you wanted uh, 50,000 exposure, that'd be $7,950. That's a maximum of risk. If I wanted to get, a, a, say, $50,000 worth of exposure, first of all, I and I borrowed the money, I've got to pay for the loan, and then I've got to put the $50,000 in. That's at risk. The money that I borrow is at risk. If I, you know, so in this instance here, it's a very interesting investment in that the maximum at risk is simply that interest amount plus the fee, you can use a self-managed super fund, no obligations, everything's paid up and it's got the cap downside. Now, if you've got any questions, please uh, put them in, uh, type them into the chat box now. Uh, John has asked, can he use his super fund? If it's a self-managed super fund, John, you definitely can use it. A lot of people invest that way. Um, if you, okay, so if you would like to get the PDS sent through, type yes in now and we'll have it sent through. If you would like to get it sent through with a pre-populated investment amount, exposure amount, just type the amount of exposure into the chat box and we will set, send the PDS out to you pre-populated with the exposure amount in there. All right. Look, it's been a, a very interesting period of time 
and there have been a lot of companies that are looking at, um, you, you know, that, that will come out of it stronger, right? Uh, businesses have changed. I mean, I know that, um, you know, around our a roadshow business, which we've really just started, through that roadshow business, we're now, um, you know, uh, running our meetings online. We've built a tech platform around it so we can go out there. We can actually get, it's way easier for us to get a meeting now, right? Everyone, all the funds managers and so forth we deal with, they still need to be looking at investments that, to do their job. They still need to be going through this process, um, yet we've moved it to technology. We've used, you know, so we won't be getting on a plane. We won't be staying in a hotel. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and so that's time, you know, a roadshow like that, there's, you know, the corporate people, the company, the person that runs the roadshow in the first place. There's three people that would get on a plane, travel to Singapore, stay in a hotel, uh, go out for dinner, um, you know, uh, run around, jump in taxis, do all that kind of stuff, get on a plane, go to Hong Kong, do the same thing again. Um, all of that will be replaced uh, by, in our case, a platform that we've built but is powered by an external provider. Um, all of that will be replaced and I don't know if it's going to come back in a hurry. You know, there will be some instances where it's worth getting on the ground locally but in the most, most times not, right? And, uh, you know, uh, technology businesses, uh, we think uh, the pick of the bunch at the moment from a sector perspective um, to go in. Um, but we want to go in there and, uh, in, in a way that we don't, there are some unknowns for us at the moment. Um, what goes on around uh, corona and how that plays out over the next six months, yeah, maybe it all goes back to normal, I don't know, right? Uh, there, might, there will be contagion back into our economy. There will be changes that happen regardless. But what if it does come back in? And that's going to hold people back, I think. Um, what if it does come back, right? So being able to time our way in, important and being able to set ourselves in, in, into businesses that, yeah, they might have issues around it, but they're much more likely to benefit from the changes that are occurring and be strong and have tailwinds coming out uh, than other businesses or the broader market, all right? Uh, so everyone that's requested the PDS will get that sent through. Uh, for those of you that have requested exposure amounts, I will get that, uh, I'll get the guys to put that in. David Sellers, Blake Reed are the two advisors managing this investment. So have a chat to them, read the PDS, but talk to the guys, they can explain anything to you. Um, we, um, you know, uh, if you've got questions, technical questions around the investment, by all means, um, any question at all, please, please shoot away. Happy to answer it. We're happy to get you through to it. Um, and really, I, I think that's basically, I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. So. Um, uh, you know, uh, for, for everyone that has requested information, we'll send them through. I haven't had any specific questions around the investment come through. Um, so I'll just see if I've got any, I think that's it from slides from me. Um, yeah, no, this is just looking back in time. Um, and okay, Jeff's asked about investments amount, so I'll just go back to that. So uh, Jeff, from an exposure amount, if you're looking for exposure, so if you type in 50 or 100, 150, whatever amount that you want, just type that in and the guys will pre-populate the, pre the docs for you and get that sent over, all right? Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they're just, they're the rounded numbers. You choose what, what exact number you want um, for you. Uh, other than that, I think um, I've covered everything we needed to cover to go through this investment. It's an interesting one. Um, any questions, guys, come through. Interesting market out there at the moment. Um, we, we ran our trading webcast today and there was a fair, I mean, you know, granted Ivan has been uh, very busy and uh, I've been similar, but there just hasn't been a lot of directional trades in there. Uh, so we've been, uh, we've been sitting back. Uh, sort of waiting for the next thing to happen. There's a few key levels out there at the moment, um, but um, you know, it, it, I think we're still looking ahead for some directions around earnings season and the like. Uh, you know, this could move up very, very quickly. Um, it could equally break down and go down. It's just one of those times where um, there will be people on both sides of the equation having very, very strong opinions about it, and both of those people that are having these strong opinions about it 
read more than we read, probably are smarter. They at least present themselves as being smarter. Both of them have got polar opposite views on how the market's going to work out. Um, uh, you know, some will be saying this is exceptionally cheap. Uh, it's an opportunity to get in. Um, and you're not going to see this opportunity again. Others are saying it's going to get worse, it's going to flow through. Well, this type of investment gives us the opportunity to take a position, not sit back on the sideline and go, wow, I missed that. Um, uh, you know, I should have bought where it was a bit cheaper. It gives you the opportunity to, to dip a toe in there and um, take a position. If the market pulls back, we have that look back option functionality to choose the lowest in the month price. Uh, or if it moves, well, we could position ourselves in there uh, and, and not miss out. All right. So I think if there, oh, I think there might have been a couple of questions come through. Well, uh, Ian, it's the uh, American technology sector. All right. Rams asks, is your trading strategy transparent? Uh, Ram, if you're referring to my trading strategies, I talk about every trade I do online. On, and explain why I did what I did, and, and Ivan does the same, and we, we put out trade ideas and so forth, and we do quantitative backtesting around them, we publish that, you can backtest any of them. So on the trading side of it, completely transparent. In terms of how we price this up, it's all outlined in the PDS for this particular investment. Uh, when we go in and trade it, yes, you can see those, and we report back to you. Uh, Terence has asked, uh, this looks like a fixed term investment for two years. What is the penalty to get out uh, before the two years? It is not, uh, there is no penalty, Terence. Right? There's no penalty. You can close out earlier. Um, I just, Dave's online. I'll just triple check there is no penalty. I believe there is a penalty for closing out earlier. Um, so we just price it up for you if you need to get out earlier. Um, so yeah, Dave's just confirming there's no penalty. Uh, yeah, so if you need to get out of the investment earlier, um, and sometimes, if there's just a big move, um, uh, you know, there have been instances where we've just closed the trade out, this type of trade out earlier, and just taken our profit off the table, right? So, um, yeah, th that would be an instance where we would close out earlier. Okay, John's asked, can he top the investment up? No, this is a fixed investment. It will trade on the 6th of May, I believe 6th of May, 5th or 6th of May, it closes at the end of next week, so you have to have your, your paperwork back and be funded uh, by Friday next week. And, um, you know, you're, um, uh, you, 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 but you have to get it set up. And once it trades, that's it. Uh, we, it's negotiated with the investment bank um, and, um, you know, and, and, and so forth. Uh, back to your question. Uh, it's Simon, uh, you like the, the, the possibility of closing earlier? Yeah, and what happens is we work with the investment bank, so we just we'll 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 go back to them and get a, a get pricing if you want to get out earlier and give you that pricing and so forth. Um, uh, the team will keep you updated throughout the investment term, um, and uh, you know we'll send you updates on 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 how it's trucking as you go. Okay, David. Um, okay, yep. How do you know? when to enter. So with the, the trade date is the 6th of May, right? And the functionality, so it trades on that day, but the strategy value um, is determined at the end of six months and it takes the lowest end of month entry price. So if that's the 6th of May uh, or if that's the end of uh, April, great. Um, if, if it's uh, one of the other months, so be it. it it's, um, it's just determined on that pricing. And it's got that look back functionality, which um, we've done one on the broader market um, and we like this functionality. Look, most of the stuff that we do um, is working with venture capital, private equity groups. Um, a lot of the investments we do don't ever get discussed um, uh, at, you know, broadly or even with the majority of the network. Uh, it might just be things that we do with private investors or between institutions. Um, but we do like to look around. Um, last, you know, last year, earlier this year, we've been looking at going long volatility. So we'll use an investment bank that puts uh, investments together for hedge funds to, and choose one of those investments uh, that we de we determine meets what our view of the market at that point in time. Or if we're looking to hedge a position, allows us to hedge and do things that otherwise can be a little bit more difficult. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sandeep's asked, uh, why is it the end of month 
and not the actual lowest point. We would rarely see the lowest point at the end of month. Yeah, look, Sandeep, I take your point. You, you, it, 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 the chance of getting the absolute lowest point um, uh, it would be, uh, you, you, and it, that ain't being the end of the month, um, you know, statistically, your odds probably aren't great, but it, that will be the date. I would agree with you, Sunday, and I would prefer if we could choose the absolute lowest point. However, um, when you're pricing up these products, uh, you try and get to finesse it too much, the cost of the product goes up and it, it diminishes the value of that functionality. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. It would be better if it was but that will impact the pricing um, uh, that a, the investment bank would be prepared to give you. Uh, and yeah, so it's just probably a bit too fiddly for them. Um, and, and so it'll be, you know, hopefully roughly uh, the lowest point, but maybe not exactly the lowest point, Sunday. Um, yeah. Cool. That's a pleasure. All right. Um, I think we've covered all the questions that have been asked. To anyone that hasn't requested the PDS, yes. Uh, again, if you want to choose uh, an appropriate level uh, of exposure, uh, you know, roughly that's the investment cost um, there. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you type that in, as many of you have, we will get you uh, all of that paperwork sent through, follow you up, answer any questions. Um, you know, we've got, to, we've got to get our skates on a little bit. We're a week out from closing the trade, um, but, uh, you know, clearly plenty of time to be able to consume the information. And David and Blake know the investments well. Um, if you go and ask a, 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 a question that is, it hasn't been answered, asked before, then we will go and uh, speak to the investment bank to get the answer. But, you know, we're pretty comfortable with how these things work. So just, just have a chat to us. Um, we, we, in particular, like this one. Guys, um, not seeing any other questions come through. Uh, I'll call the session to a halt at the moment. Thank you very much for coming along. When you leave the session, uh, there's an opportunity to give some feedback. Um, please do. And uh, otherwise, um, uh, we, uh, in terms of sessions that we're running, uh, if you get our morning update, uh, we're going to, we've got a professional trader and funds manager joining us next Tuesday night, uh, Kieran Callahan, um, really interesting guy. Um, he's going to be talking about uh, some of the, the hedges that he's put in place. Uh, you know, he, he consults to funds and so forth. I met him at, uh, at an ASX event put on for funds managers where he was talking about um, how he hedged different uh, scenarios. So he's going to be on next Tuesday night. If you'd like to attend that session, type attend in. I'll get someone to send you an invite. Uh, that should be an interesting session. It's just going to be a Q&A &A session. I'll be interviewing him. He'll be discussing what he's done recently and and if you're online, you want to ask questions as well, you'll be able to do so. Um, other than that, guys, have a wonderful night. Hope everyone's doing well. And, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll no doubt see you uh, all shortly. Thank you. Cheers.